size one or size two? That is generally the question that you see first when you begin your research into using a menstrual cup. That's what we're gonna discuss in today's video. And we're going to address that big question of the, are you over 30 or have you had a baby? So stay tuned and let's dive right in. I'm Kim Rosas from Put A Cup In It, and so happy to have you here. If you aren't subscribed, just take a quick moment and hit that button down below, or the little one that is probably floating somewhere down here, down here. Hit one of these, wherever it is, and stay up to date on our videos. So the first thing we need to address is the actual sizing of menstrual cups. And I have a delicious dish of menstrual cups right here and the one and two size offering. Most of the time, the brands will come in a size one and a size two. And what that is referring to is strictly the diameter. So these are size one, size two, very similar. It will vary brand to brand. So it's also good to look at our menstrual cup comparison chart along with taking our menstrual cup quiz to pick the right size. Of course, there are some brands that offer three or even more sizes, but the majority of the brands you're going to come across are a one or two, small or large, or whatever the case is on their sizing names. This is even the case for brands who tell you you should pick a, a size based on your actual heaviness of your period. Don't do that. That is my biggest pet peeve. Buying a menstrual cup, you need to have it fit you and be comfortable and stay in place. The capacity is something you can think about later, but you really just want the first priority to be that the cup fits lengthwise, which we've talked about in many other videos. So check the video I'm gonna put in our card or in the video description for information on finding that, or, and you need it to fit and stay in place in your vagina. Capacity is not exactly related to fit. If they tell you to pick light or heavy as if you are buying tampons, don't do it. End of soapbox moment. So then how do you pick the size that you need that's going to fit? Here's the conventional advice. If you are under 30 and you haven't had a full-term pregnancy, you are a size one or small or whatever. If you are over 30 and or you've had a full-term pregnancy, you are a size two. These are actually pretty good guidelines, but they are not a rule. So think about it this way. Let's say you are 29, about to turn 30. Your birthday's tomorrow. You're on your period and you have your menstrual cup in that has been working for you well for many years. You wake up the next day, you walk to the toilet and the cup falls out of your giant gaping vagina because you're 30 years old and you now have a giant cavernous vagina. It's not how it works. Blowing the candles out on your 30th birthday cake does not immediately expand your vagina into a giant cave. It's funny to think about, but that's not how vaginas work or bodies work. The reason these guidelines exist is that science has found, studying vaginas, because that's someone's job, that you lose muscle tone in your muscles, in your pelvic floor area, as you get older. Now this is a slow process. It's not something that happens overnight, but someone had to draw a line in the sand and say, Generally speaking, all that lost muscle tone happens after 30. Under 30, you're still relatively fit. I think a lot of people assume this guideline is really referring to how used or not the vagina is, and that by the time you're 30, your vagina is fitting around a menstrual cup the way your jeans fit the fifth time they've been worn before a wash. That's not it at all. It doesn't matter if you were a virgin at 30 or if you have had 500 partners. None of that matters. Don't think of it that way. It is purely about muscle tone. It is not saying anything about what you put in there or what the size is of what you put in there. None of that matters. Now, you're probably thinking that muscles can be worked out and you are right. If you're over 30 and you're very active and you do different exercises that work and tone your pelvic floor, then chances are a size one is still gonna work for you just fine. But this is just a guideline to help you navigate the confusing waters of menstrual cups and overall it is pretty accurate. So under 30, nice and tight. <laughs> Over 30, 
maybe just a little less tight. <laughs> and that's it. So let's look at the differences depending on the brand, size one, size two, or size small, size regular. So don't be offended if you do turn 30 and you're recommended a size larger because it's not the difference of this and this. Now let's talk about that other part of the statement. Those of us over 30 or those of us who have had full-term pregnancies. First, we need to clarify that statement because depending on where you're reading it, it may be referred to as over 30 and or have given birth. I like to say over 30 and or have had a full-term pregnancy because what people generally think of when they hear giving birth is that you have shot a baby out of your baby cannon. And that's where they think, oh, well, I had a C-section. I didn't have a vaginal delivery, so am I still a size two? And the answer is yes, because that's not what it's referring to. So just to get that out of the way, that's what it means. There are different versions of what it is a full-term pregnancy, but most people consider over 37 weeks. And again, whatever method of delivery, it still counts. So the reason for this is that if you have had a full-term pregnancy, your body got ready for delivery. It was preparing for labor and everything has loosened up. The muscle tone has relaxed. And so that means once you have recovered from giving birth, having a baby, whatever, when you have your first postpartum period, you have looser muscle tone than you did before the pregnancy. So again, you are gonna be recommended the larger diameter so it stays in place. That's all they mean when they say, have given birth, full-term pregnancy. If you gave birth at 17, it doesn't matter. You will be likely recommended the size two because of that. If you gave birth at 45, well, you're already a size two because you're over 30. So don't even worry about it. Sizing of cups, diameter speaking, and really that's how every cup measures is just diameter. It's referring to nothing else just diameter. All of this is about your muscle tone. The vagina stretches, but the muscles do lose toneness over time. So regardless of whatever you do in your spare time, how many babies you have, all it takes is one to put you in size two territory. And all it takes is slowly aging and losing all of the elasticity, collagen, and muscle tone that comes along with it. If you're watching this and you're thinking, well, I'm a petite person and I'm in my 40s and I still think that my vagina is very narrow, you might be right. All of this is just a guideline. So you know your body best. And if you do think you're a 45 year old with a tiny vagina, you might be a 45 year old with a tiny vagina. So you have to decide what's best for you. But if you're in doubt and you feel like you're on the fence, probably go with the larger diameter. And I say this because a vagina is designed to stretch and is designed to accommodate things, but it cannot clench down on something that is too narrow. I'll give you an example. This is a very tiny cup. So let's pretend this is your vagina and you're wearing a tiny little cup that doesn't actually press against the walls of the vagina. As you move and walk, it's going to push against the cup and it will very slowly just kind of slide because it's not pushing against the walls and being held in place, which is the point of picking the correct size for your vagina. So during the day, it will slip, and all of a sudden you will find yourself crowning in the passenger seat of your car, screaming at someone to get you to a bathroom in a hurry because you're giving birth to your cat. You don't want this. So if you're on the fence, chances are the size two will be fine for you. I mean, it's not gonna be that dramatic that you're giving birth to your cup, but I have given birth to a cup almost, and it's not fun. And I probably would have screamed at someone if I had someone to scream at to get me to a bathroom. Let's say you guess wrong and you pick a diameter cup that is too large. The signs will be, in this case, that the cup won't unfold inside of you because there's nowhere for it to go. We have tips in another video about that, but you could press against the vaginal wall to try to get it open or push from the bottom of the cup, try to get it to open that way. If all of these tricks don't work, maybe it's too large. And another sign would be that you just feel the cup and that it's uncomfortable or putting pressure on you. And that either could be that it's too large of a diameter or it could be a sign that the cup's too firm for you. There are different reasons for why you would feel that. So you kind of have to decide which one you think it is. And if you're someone who is very physically active, does the kind of exercises that strengthen the pelvic floor, or you've actually had pelvic floor therapy, you might feel more comfortable with the smaller of the diameter cups. So it's just 
a guideline and I think people get a little in a tizzy about these rules because everyone wants to think they have a small vagina. I would like to say I am a candidate for this cup. I am not. I am more of a candidate for this cup. That's the Tampax. It's designed a little bit differently, but um, yeah, I can still wear that cup, but I can also still wear this cup. So yeah, so I think that covers it. I really just wanted to take time in this video to explain only the diameter differences because we do have another video about choosing the right menstrual cup size and it covers things like length as well, which is as important, if not more important than picking the right diameter, but diameter is definitely either tied or a close second on what you need to consider when picking the right size. Before you go to the next step of buying your cup, you've seen this video, make sure you check out our how to find and measure your cervix video and understand how that comes into play with a cup being too long or short for your vagina, very important. And then go take our menstrual cup quiz and get a list of cups most likely to work for you. And you should be on track for finding a cup that is very likely going to work for you the first time. And that's why Put A Cup In It is here. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you would, give this a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. up some tea with my menstrual cup plate. How long until these fall? Oh, there they go, there they go.